speak for my little dog. Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful day. In the collapse of global industrial civilization on this spectacularly gorgeous summer morning. It is Tuesday morning, somewhere around July 19th, 2022. So before it hits up to 90 degrees, I'm going to enjoy this beautiful morning. We're going to get some more hemlock wood for my uh, tiny house. Uh, so anyway, yesterday, remember we flipped a coin between the brain side of the coin uh, with uh, Umer Hake, if that's how you pronounce, H-A-Q-U-E, and Elon Musk on the ass side of the coin, and it came up the ass side of the coin. So we got to hear about Elon Musk's view of the future, where among other things, Elon Musk uh, talking about having one million, one million people living on Mars by 2050. So today we are going to the head side of the coin, the brain side of the coin, and we're going to hear from our fellow uh, Doomer on steroids, uh, Umer Hake. I guess I need to get back into my uh, interview mode and interview Umer. So anyway, uh, I think it was alert listener AL who sent me. This was from the day before yesterday, Umer's. Uh, Umer's essay, we are not going to make it to 2050. So I go on that and I, and, and I go on to uh, Umer Hake's website and good lord, I, when was I checking in with this dude? I, like three weeks ago. Here, these are his essays. Let's see, what is this? The last week. This is, uh, Umer Haik is, is on a roll. He has become the new uh, godfather of the Doomosphere, apparently. Here is the end of the American experiment. It's over. So what can the world learn? That was July 11th. July 12th. How much worse are the 2020s going to get? Why the 2020s are the worst decade in modern history. Okay, July 13th. We are sleepwalking into the age of extinction. It is humanity versus extinction. And the clock is ticking. Okay. July 14th, why we keep underestimating the corona panic, how the corona panic is becoming the forever pandemic. Yes. Okay, July 15th, why are we being hit by so many crises at once? Because this is extinction. It's not a coincidence. We are now entering the age of extinction, and you can feel it by the day. July 16th. What summer is like when the sunlight can kill you? How I found out the hard way that light can kill me. Yes, let's see, July 17th, two days ago, we are not going to make it to 2050. The age of extinction is dawning by the day, and we're doing too little too late to stop it. And if that's not enough, we have yesterday. I, I, I'm sure he's got one in the hopper coming out. So yesterday, 
this is not climate change anymore. It is climate suicide. Three facts everyone should know about the age of extinction. So I was going just to read, we're not going to make it to 2050. But I, well, I think what I'm going to do, we're just going to take an Umer Hake sampler. Maybe this will be a monthly, uh, a, a, a monthly roundup of Umer Hake uh, stories. We're just going to read. What I'm going to do is we're going to just go down the list starting with yesterday and just read the first few paragraphs of Umer Hake, and you can go on his excellent website, which is called Eudaimonia, E-U-D-A-I-M-O-N-I-A. -I, -I, I have no idea what the word eudaimonia even means. I don't even want to think. And you can find all of these essays and all of the others, and you can actually track how Umer has become more and more freaked out over the last year. Uh, okay, we're just going to start with yesterday, with yesterday and work down the list. <clears throat> All right, this is not climate change anymore. It is climate suicide. And he starts by showing two maps of the globe the first one is mostly blue. The second one is mostly red. See those two pics above? That is what is known as the world heat map. One is from 1976, which was a hot year back in those days. The other one is now. I don't have to explain which is which. You already know. You know because Europe is on fire. France, Portugal, Sp Spain, Greece, a ring of flames is sweeping through it. London is hotter than parts of the Sahara Desert. It was the hottest temperature ever recorded in history in England yesterday. I think uh, about 40 degrees C or 102 degrees. Uh, about the same temperature in England as in Austin, Texas yesterday, and it could be hotter today. London is hotter than parts of the Sahara Desert. In France, they're calling it a heat apocalypse, and that is just the beginning. Yes. Uh, wildfires raged at the weekend across Europe and North America. In South America, the Machu Picchu archaeological site was threatened by fire. Extreme heat has broken records around the world in recent months as heat waves have struck India and South Asia. Droughts have devastated parts of Africa and unprecedented heat waves at both poles simultaneously astounded scientists in March. What does the world heat map tell you? Here's what it tells me. This is not just climate change anymore. It is climate suicide. Thank you, Umer. Okay. Now, how do I get back here? Let's go to the one that I was going to read. This was from two days ago. We are not going to make it to 2050. And uh, we need to find out mainly what his definition of we is. And then again, he starts out with, take a wild guess, the global heat map. <clears throat> There is a brutal truth that I think we are all going to have to contend with. Take a look out there in the world. How do you think things are going? I'm taking a look out here at Bugs in a Jar. It is absolutely, spectacularly gorgeous. 
I hear the birds singing, the frogs croaking, there's butterflies fluttering around, the flowers are in bloom. Uh, it's, what is it? It is 75 degrees. It is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the Finger Lakes of New York. Well, until it hits 90. That's what I uh, see here. Things are going, well, except for my pond drying up. Let's see, I've already lost one of my three ponds. I think that frog is croaking saying goodbye to the world. Anyway, take a look out there at the world. How do you think things are going? Europe is on fire. The continent fire stretch from France through Spain and Portugal to Greece. The temperatures hit 45 degrees Celsius. Wary firefighters are trying to put out the blazes. Stories abound of families and vacationers fleeing for dear life. Yes. Then, of course, he talks about London and that heat wave. In America, the West is running out of water. Well, so are we in uh, upstate New York. Uh, in America, the West is running out of water. Lake Mead and Shasta Lake are running dry. They are projected to hit the breaking point in 2025. That sounds awful optimistic to me coming out of Umer's mouth. Uh, I, I think they're going to hit the breaking point in, in about three hours. Anyway, they're projected to hit the breaking point in 2025. That is two years away. This system is headed for catastrophic failure. Because of it, entire cities like Las Vegas and Phoenix exist. It sustains California's agriculture, which is America's breadbasket. When it goes, it's two years, if not two hours. Then there is the east, not the eastern U.S., the, just the eastern part of the world, I guess. Through Iran and the Indian subcontinent, the hottest temperatures on Earth are being recorded. There, people are lucky to have electricity for 12 hours a day. All that, though, it is only the beginning. Yes, because of the killing heat, crops are beginning to fail. What kinds of crops? The better answer is, what isn't on the list? Harvest for everything from cocoa to coffee to wheat to sugar to mustard are beginning to decline. They are not going to stop because neither is the heat. The crops our civilization depends on, they cannot survive the killing heat either. So, what happens? As harvests fail, prices spike. Shortages break out. Both of those are beginning to happen now. Yeah. Um, this is our daily catch-up chit-chat in an age of extinction. Yes. What happens as prices spike, inflation roars, and what happens as a consequence of inflation? People get poorer. What do people who are getting poorer not have the money to do anymore? Invest. They can't afford to pay the taxes which fund modern social contracts, and so societies simply begin to fall apart. This is the vicious cycle many, many civilizations have fallen into before us. Essentially, poverty breeds an inability to take collective action and make collective investments. All the systems of a golden age, they simply begin to crumble, break down, fail. And now, there is nothing much left over to repair them because people are just fighting for basics a little more bitterly every day. 
Sounds like the path we're on? It should, because it is. What is the brutal to truth I am trying to get to? It goes like this. We are not going to make it to 2050, not even close to that far. By make it, I don't mean some kind of dumb Marvel movie. We're all going to die tomorrow? Nope. I mean civilization as we know it is what's not going to be we. Civilization as we know it, no way that this thing is holding together till 2050. Not even close. I mean that things are going to collapse much, much faster and harder than we think. Isn't that already the case? That is the trend which every clear-thinking person should understand very, very intently right about now. Yes. Take a hard look at right now. Do you really think our civilization is going to survive another three decades of this? Skyrocketing inflation, growing shortages, runaway temperatures, killing heat, failing harvest, shattered systems, continents on fire, masses turning to lunacy and theocracy and fascism as a result. Seriously? Another three decades where every summer is that much worse than this one? Let's be real for a moment. Yes. Why do I pick 2050? That is the date that so far our efforts to fight climate change, which he now calls climate suicide, are centered around. The nations of the world have gotten together and chosen 2050 as the date to hit net zero, meaning that is when carbon emissions are planned to be balanced out. That's a nice goal. It's not a bad one. There is just one problem. We are not going to make it to 2050. Anyway, guys, uh, it goes on and on somewhere in here uh, that I just didn't get to. Uh, again, you can pick up from here and, and read the rest of this. I think we get your point, Umer, but he does you know, qualify this at some point that he is in no way, shape, or form climbing on the near-term human extinction bandwagon that humans are going to be extinct by 2030. Uh, he, he, he does make an amplification and clarification that he still has a brain and understands that uh, there will be plenty of humans going right about their business in 2030 uh, and marching into 2050 when Elon Musk will be putting one million people on Mars. All right, we're just going to read the first two paragraphs of this roundup. Okay, what summer is like when the sunlight can kill you. Yes. Here is something you might never have wondered. What is it like during a summer like this? It's been a damn nice summer. It's been one of the coolest summers uh, that I have ever had since the day I was born. We don't own an air conditioner because I sold both of them last year. And I have had the heat on more than I would have had the air conditioner on if we even had an air conditioner. There you go. What's it like during a summer like this if the sunlight can kill you? How do you even exist? 
Welcome to my life, friends. I'm about to tell you the answer to how do you even exist is very, very carefully. Yes. Yes, the sunlight really can kill me. If you don't already know the story of how I found this out, buckle up because it's a good one, and it is a good one, but uh, you'll have to read it yourself. Uh, okay, so why are we being hit by so many crises at once? Because this is extinction. <clears throat> oh no, well guess what? Uh, I just got, I have hit my, apparently it's, uh, I have hit my limit with, uh, Umer articles, uh, but it says you can, uh, I can't do this now because I gotta go, uh, you can sign up to his website with a free account, so you're not gonna get paywalled out. But I guess I'm going to have to go through the motions. Uh, I was wondering when uh, I was going to hit the wall with Umer. So anyway, uh, I guess uh, Umer says you have, uh, you're copying my stories too freely, Sam. So maybe tomorrow, uh, after I uh, check in a little more deeply to this weird website, you go get that chippy like that. Strange sounds. Uh, I think maybe tomorrow we're gonna come out with some of the best Doomer porn I have read, e even better than Umer. Uh, that AL also sent me Atlantic Plankton, all but wiped out in catastrophic loss of life. So, uh, there you go. Anyway, we might come back to that. Uh, I mean, it's even too much uh, doomer porn for me. Uh, we will see, but right now, I have to, uh, me and the little dog, the little dog and I, should say, uh, have to pack it up and get another truck full of hemlock wood to keep the building our tiny house. So uh, get out there and uh, grab all the hemlock lumber while you still can. Bye, guys.